Hey everyone, a very good morning to all of you. Myself Neha Gupta, your mentor. Okay. So you guys can clearly see the time back. So I'm going to bring the daily current affairs video videos on a daily basis because students were asking me to bring the daily current affairs because they feel that they are not able to grasp all in one video. So let's begin the current affairs on a daily basis from now onwards and let's begin today's class. Guys, I hope you are aware of the mobile application of ours uh, as well as these channels through which you can uh, reach out to us. And this is our mobile application. If you, uh, sorry, mobile number, if you want to give any kind of feedback or if you want to have any kind of discussion, you can WhatsApp us through this number. Okay. So let's begin with the first question. Where will the first meeting of the G20 working group on environment and climate sustainability be held in February 2023? So here, Bangalore guys is the right. Now this is one of many meetings India is going to organize within the ambit of G20 because India is the chair of G20 this year, president of G20 this year. And this is the 18th edition of the G20 summit which India is going to host. Okay, so because India is hosting the G20 meetings and G20 has many meetings within one year. So what should be your take? Your take should be that you need to remember the names of the meetings, the locations as well as the themes because India is hosting those meetings, okay? So that makes it important for all of you to remember. Now here, as far as this meeting is concerned, luckily we do not have a specific theme associated with it. Rather, the focus areas are provided, okay? So the focus area is the land degradation and the enhancement of biodiversity, okay? So these are the two areas on which the discussions will be conducted in this G20 environment and climate sustainability meeting in Bangalore. Okay, in February. The next question is which edition of the Directors General of Police, Inspectors General of Police Conference was held in New Delhi? So it is 57th edition. And if you are regularly following Spotlight on my daily GK sessions, you would be aware that the editions are important and never leave any editions of the important conferences because RBI, NABARD and SEBI and many other examinations do ask these questions. Okay, so prepare the editions specifically. Now, this is the 57th edition which was held in New Delhi and uh, obviously we know that India aims to become a developed nation by 2047 at the 535. Brilliant economy by 2025 and how can an economy thrive when its police and law and order is not in its place, okay? So the police and the law and order is going to play a very major role in achieving the 5 trillion economy dream and a developed nation economy dream of it, okay? The next question is which ID has developed the mobile operating software? Bahar OS to benefit India's 100 crore cell phone users in it. So here, IT Madras is the right. Okay. So guys, IT Madras has developed this Bahar OS. Okay, so the name is missing here. It is Bahar OS, which is short of the Bharat operating system. Okay. So it has been developed by Jan Operations Private Limited, which is a company incubated by the IIT Madras itself. So we can clearly say IIT Madras has developed this Bharat OS system, Bhar OS. Okay. Now, what is the significance of this system? The significance is that you smartphone to use karte honge, and us smartphone mein aapko kaun sa operating system. Mein? Either you get the Android or you get the iOS. Apple only users iOS lete hai and all the other people use the Android smartphones. Okay, now who owns these systems? Android is owned by Google. Okay, and this is owned by the Apple company iOS. Okay, so we do not have any operating system of our own, and we all know that these companies when we use their operating system, they capture the data of ours. Okay, not through the operating system but through the various websites but the problem here is that google because it is the it is the owner of the operating system as well it does not give us any option to choose any other search engine do we get any other option in our mobile phones to install the yahoo or yay search engine whenever we get this search option in our mobile applications 
but mobile phones, what do we get the symbol of? It's of Google. We do not get any other search engines option. And this is precisely against the competition. Or is he the Competition Commission of India has given a ruling against Google as well. Okay. But we are not going to discuss it here because that would be that would deviate us from the topic itself. Now I was telling you the significance of Bharat OS. So it is going to be our own indigenous system. So all the revenue that we will be generating by collaborating with the mobile manufacturers, which are also called the original equipment manufacturers that will be approved to India only because the mobile manufacturers partnered with Google or AdWords and because of this partnership they get the money they get the users user base okay and we get the pre-installed applications which we cannot delete from our mobile application and but from now onwards what will happen if this system gets on us uh, like it gets on the ground, then what will happen? That the money will come into India and we will get various options as well. Okay. So that's the benefit of this system. India is not only going into the operating system, but we also have developed our own GPS system, which is the Navi system. Okay. So let's hope that these indigenous systems set the sail and get their pace on and we uh, use our own indigenous systems more and more and let's see what will happen in the future with respect to these applications. Now coming to the question number four. So in January 2023, India has announced so it can be export benefits under the revision of duties and taxes on export products seen to domestic green hydrogen fuel manufacturers. In the light of the above statement, which of the following statement is our income? So statement one is, the scheme is designed to offer refunds against some local levies to exporters of capital goods. India targets for an annual production of 5 billion tons of green hydrogen by 2030. India is to provide at least 10% of global demand of hydrogen by 2030. So here guys, there are two statements which are related to the targets of India and one statement which is related to the scheme. Now if you don't know the scheme itself or the news itself, you can solve this question by applying the common sense. How? Let me tell you. These two are related to the targets but this is the odd one out. And read this statement carefully. This statement is telling us that the exporters of the capital goods are given the favors. However, in the question itself we have read that recently the manufacturers of the green hydrogen fuel, green hydrogen is not a capital good, right? So the green hydrogen fuel manufacturers are also being given the waiver on the export duties. So it is negating this statement itself. So it is the wrong statement here. So by applying the common sense and by keeping your presence of mind in the examination hall, you can solve these kinds of questions. Now, what is the right answer? Option A. Okay. Okay, so let's discuss the news in detail. So, India will extend the export benefits to the green hydrogen manufacturers, which means that now the green hydrogen fuel will also be exported to the other nation. However, the export duty remission does not guarantee the export of green hydrogen fuel. But still, it is an incentive for the manufacturers of the green hydrogen fuel that they would um, export the fuel further to the other nation. Okay. That is what, apart from this, India has also approved a dollar two point one one billion incentive plan to boost the local production and encourage the use of green hydrogen. Okay, so green hydrogen, I hope all of you know that. Okay, let me tell you, hydrogen is done by doing the electrolysis of water, that is H two. Okay, so oxygen is separated and hydrogen is separated. Now this electrolysis process needs electricity and when we use the renewable energy for doing the electrolysis process then it is called the green hydrogen. Okay? So this green hydrogen is being focused upon because we need to have more and more clean energy in our total energy mix. But have you ever thought that why does the government need the green hydrogen for uh, cleaning its energy sources? when we are producing the solar energy 
energy when we are producing the wind energy why are we focusing on the green hydrogen and this green hydrogen in itself is a process wherein we are deploying one source of renewable energy to extract another source of renewable energy so how does it make sense have you ever thought about it the reason behind this which i can see the broad reason behind this is that hydrogen effectiveness is higher than the solar and wind energies electricity okay for example if i have to run a machine which needs very high quantity of energy or a uh, very uh, i would say high need, uh, flow of electrons okay high energy chahiye so for that the hydrogen would be the best fuel to run the very big machines but solar or wind energy might not prove as a very good source of fuel that is why hydrogen is also called as the fuel of the future do remember this can be a question which element of which fuel is called as the fuel of the future so hydrogen is considered as the fuel of the future because it is considerably stable and it can be used to run uh, big machines and we can clearly see that it is renewable in nature because we are of uh, extracting it from the water and the process which we are deploying to extract hydrogen is renewable itself so it is a complete cycle right so that's the basic idea apart from this we have the gray hydrogen we have the black or the brown hydrogen we have the blue hydrogen we have the pink hydrogen yes pink also exists okay so there are two or two three more hydrogen colors which i am not remembering right now but let me just tell you these hydrogen and majority of these these three and the green hydrogen are very much asked in the examination okay so gray hydrogen is the hydrogen which is extracted by using the natural gas okay in the electrolysis process black or brown hydrogen uses coal blue hydrogen uses natural gas but the difference is that the natural gas is used in the blue hydrogen the carbon emitted out of this entire process is captured okay and then that captured carbon is condensed and used for another purpose so that is why it is called blue hydrogen because it reduces the carbon emission okay that's the basic idea and green hydrogen guys uses the nuclear energy for the electrolysis process okay here so here we have certain target Uh, related to India's hydrogen potential or the vision of India related to green hydrogen. So we are planning to produce an annual production of five million tons of green hydrogen and provide at least ten percent of the global demand of hydrogen by twenty thirty. Because this is the potential area. This is the area where we can earn much money if we uh, tap on this green hydrogen potential of India at the early stage, which is right now only. Okay. Because green hydrogen, I already told you, is the fuel of the future. So India aims to supply at least ten percent of the global demand of hydrogen, which would definitely propel our economy to become a developed one by twenty forty seven. So again, it is in that direction, and also it will help us achieve a net zero carbon emission by twenty seventy. <coughs> Okay, so the next question is as per the newspaper report published in January twenty twenty three, the Prime Minister of India, Sri Narendra Modi, announced to change the names of dash islands of Andaman and Nicobar Islands after the Foreign Minister Chakra Kapoori. The largest unnamed island will be named after the first Foreign Minister Chakra Kapoori. The second largest unnamed island will be changed will be named after the second. For a minute, chapter a body, and so on. So, how many islands will be renamed in total? So, guys, twenty-one islands will be renamed after the for a minute chapter. Okay. So, this announcement was made on Parakram Divas. That is January twenty-three. Now, what is Parakram Divas? I hope all of you are aware. It is the birth anniversary of Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose, and on that day we celebrate the Param Vi Parakram Divas. Okay. Apart from this, we have certain other days on the politicians. 
For example, Good Governance Day on Atal Bihari Vajpayee's birthday. We celebrate the Ekta Divas on Sardar Vallabhai Patel's birthday. We celebrate the Sardharna Divas on Rajiv Gandhi's birthday. And we celebrate the Seva Divas on the birthday of Prime Minister Narendra Modi. So we have so many days on the leader's birthday. And please remember these days because these can also be asked and these constitute your general awareness. Okay. So remember all these days. Okay. And along with that, डेट चलिए ये आपका होमवर्क ही देती हूँ मैं आपको डेट्स के साथ इन सारे डेट्स के को लिखिए कमेंट्स में ओके दिस इज योर होमवर्क नाउ कमिंग बैक टू द न्यूज सो प्राइम मिनिस्टर अनिल बी नेशनल मेमोरियल डेडिकेटेड टू द नेता जी विच विल बी बिल्ड ऑन दी नेता जी सुभाष चंद्र बोस बी विच इज अ पार्ट ऑफ दी एंडमेला निकोबार आइलैंड्स ओके सो द लार्जेस्ट This statement we have read in the question itself that how the naming will be done. So I'm skipping it short. The Great Nicobar Plan is also being discussed. So under this plan, the infrastructure will be developed. So it will develop the infrastructure in the Nicobar Islands in terms of defence, commerce, logistics, and industry. Developing the authority of this Great Nicobar Plan is BTI, and it will be implemented by the Andaman and Nicobar Islands Integrated Development Corporation. Seventy-five thousand crore is the total amount of the uh, Great Nicobar Plan. Okay, we have completed seventy-five years of our independence, and to celebrate those seventy-five years, we have allocated seventy-five thousand crore to the Nicobar Islands so that we can develop the Andaman and Nicobar Islands, specifically the Great Nicobar Plan. The Nicobar Islands will be developed. Okay, now remember. This is the story which I have told you. This has nothing to do with the budget. Okay, it is just that it will help you in remembering the total outlay of this plan because it is very much similar to the seventy-five years of our independence plan, and we have announced many things related to the seventy-five years of Indian independence. The next question is which edition of the India International Science Festival was organized in Bhopal? So. Of First of all, remember that this India International Science Festival is the edition of 2022. So it is the IISF 2022. Although it was held in 2023, but it is of 2022. It is similar to Tokyo Olympics. The Olympic season was 2020, but it was held in 2021 because of the COVID, and similarly because of certain disruptions. This was held and organized in January. Okay, so do remember. Uh, this is the 2022 session. Okay, not the 2023 session, which makes it the eighth edition. Okay, why did I explain this thing? Because the 2022 is the eighth edition, and don't get confused here that this is the 2023 edition, so it would be the ninth edition of the IISF. No. This is the 2022 edition, so it is the eighth edition, which is going to be organized. And the theme of it is marching towards a America with science, technology, and innovation. I hope all of you remember that from now onwards till 2047, we have 25 years, and these 25 years are classified as the America, where we are going to change the face of India. Okay, so that is all. Now, next question. As per a newspaper report published in January 2023, the average days of employment provided per household under the Mahatma Gandhi National Employment Guarantee Scheme reached a five-year low in 2022 to 23. How many days of employment were provided per household under this scheme in FY 23? And guys, it has reached its historic low of 45 days. Sorry, 42 days. 42 days. Okay. Now, hundred days the guarantee दी जाती है under the MGM area that per household in the rural areas hundred days would be given as employment employed days to if the people of every household in the rural areas so that they do not have to face the extreme poverty. Okay, at least some way we can help them and we can pull them out of poverty by giving them the employment. But what is happening in MGM area? This is another. Drawback of MG Narega that it is not able to provide the employment days. It is not able to provide the employment opportunity to the 
people in the rural areas but clearly it is even less than the half of what is guaranteed under the act of mg narega 2005 okay so 42 days of employment are being provided in fy 23 so this is one problem another problem is the shortage of funds and precisely this is because the uh, number of employed days are also come shortage of funds is another problem because wages bhi nahi de pa rahi hai state government and the central government and because of that the already existing laborers are not getting paid in time and the new laborers are also not getting the employment opportunity and the existing laborers are getting the employment opportunities but they are not getting it up to the mark that is not 100 days so these are some of the problems which has engulfed the ngo labor scheme and it is right time to revamp the entire scheme so that the rural rural area people can also get their active contribution can also give their contribution in the making of india okay so 42 days is the average time period for which the employment was provided in fy 23 23 that is 2022 to 23 which is going to end in march this year 50 days was provided in the previous year 52 days Year prior to that, then forty-eight days in twenty FY twenty and fifty-one days in FY twenty. So we can clearly see that the number of days are not reaching up to the mark. They are around fifty or so. Okay. The next question is: What is the theme of B twenty 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 three forum or some? B twenty is the business twenty forum of the G twenty. So here the theme is. Today, so it is going to be the first B20 summit which will be held in India at Gandhi Nagar. And today is the theme which has a full form. Okay, this is an economic. So responsible, accelerated, innovative, sustainable, equitable business. And these are just the five fingers of the uh, race. Okay, the responsible, accelerated, innovative, sustainable, and equitable. Business. Okay, so if you try to remember it in this manner, you will be able to remember it for a long time. Then we have another meeting of the G20, which is going to be held in Ahmedabad, the Urban Mobility Summit. Okay. Then IIT Madras is going to host the G20 University Connect lecture series uh, for its students for the youth to connect with the G20 platform and provide many other uh, innovative solutions. Then we have Civic Twenty Engagement Group, which is also going to be or which is also going to organize its meeting at Amrita Puri in Kerala's Kolar district. Okay, and we Amrit Amrita Nandumai is going to be the chair of the Civic Twenty. Okay, the Civic Twenty Engagement Group, which is basically a group for the non-profit organizations and for the organization which is which is working in the field of social welfare. Okay, that is why. श्री अमृता माता अमृता नंद भाई हु इज पॉपुलरली कॉल्ड एज अम्बा शी इज दी सोशल वर्क दैट इज वाई शी हैज बीन चोजन एज द चेयर ऑफ दिस मीटिंग ओके सो हियर आई हैव प्रिपेयर्ड दिस टेबल थिंक ट्वेंटी मीटिंग ऑफ जी ट्वेंटी इज गोइंग टू बी हेल्ड इन भोपाल दिस इज द थीम एंड दी दिस वॉज द इंपॉर्टेंट डिसीजन Okay, take an idea. Think twenty meeting. That is Bhopal Declaration for promoting the Ayush and traditional medicine. Then we have first infrastructure working group meeting of G20 panel, which was held in Pune and finally cities of tomorrow. Use it, build it, and sustain it. Was the thing. Then we have the Youth Twenty by Twenty. I think Bharti me hui thi and it has five themes. Then G20 Health Working Group meeting, which was held in Tiruvannamalai, which is going to be held in Tiruvannamalai, Kerala. It has not been conducted as of now. So right now there is no theme, there is no declaration because they have not been conducted as of now. Okay, so these were the G20 meetings, and I have already told you that many more such meetings are going to come up. So you can clearly make a table like this, which would be your fact cheat sheet, and prepare the facts like this. Okay. This is a specimen of what I was talking to you. How you can create the cheat sheet for yourself for the G20 meetings itself. G20 के लिए ही एक sheet लग जाएगी आपको. इतनी सारी meetings होने वाली हैं G20 में and there would be a lot of facts that you have to remember 
लाइक थीम लाइक मेन्यू लाइक इंपॉर्टेंट डिसीजन बहुत कुछ होने वाला है जी ट्वेंटी में ओके एस सी ओ की समिट दिस ईयर इज ऑल्सो गोइंग टू बी होस्टेड बाय इंडिया ओके सो नाउ वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट द इंटरनेशनल ऑर्गेनाइजेशन रिसेंटली द ब्रिक्स समिट फॉर ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी थ्री बॉज इन द न्यूज कैन एनी वन ऑफ यू टेल मी दैट विच कंट्री इज होस्टिंग द ब्रिक्स समिट दिस ईयर दिस इज योर टास्क The next question is Egyptian President Abdel Fattah Al Sisi has been invited as the chief guest of the Republic Day 2023. On the occasion of the Republic Day, the Border Security Forces conducted conducted a seven-day vigilance exercise, which is named as Operation Al. <laughs> okay. So first of all, this is the seventy fourth Independence Day which we are celebrating. Some uh, websites are showing seventy sixth Independence, oh, sorry, seventy sixth Republic Day or seventy sixth, seventy fifth Republic Day, but it is actually the seventy fourth Republic Day which we are celebrating. Okay, so that is important. Second thing is that the Abdul Fattah Al Sisi was invited as a chief guest, and third thing is Operation Alert which was run by the Border Security Force. Uh, on the borders of India, so that we can prevent any kind of infiltration and any kind of disruption in the uh, Republic Day celebration. Republic Day focused on the Nari Shakti, women empowerment, and it is going to be the first Republic Day. It was the first Republic Day, which was celebrated celebrated after the Rajput was named as Kartar. Okay, so these were the certain facts. Okay, now we have many more facts related to. The Republic Day, so I'm going to quickly go through those facts. Egypt. Why did we choose Egypt specifically? So first of all, let me tell you this thing that Egypt is planning to allow Indian industry to the special uh, lands in the Suez Canal, special economy zone. Mm -hmm. And India and Egypt have also signed uh, the various agreements, yeah, such as agreement on terrorism, agreement for collaboration in culture, agreement for Sharing the broadcasting rights, so that agreement was also signed between Prasad Bharti and Egypt. So these are certain agreements which India and Egypt have signed. So this is a regular thing whenever any person comes in India or Indian diplomats go to the other nations summit for anything, we sign these bilateral agreements, which is in terms strengthening our bilateral relations. But why did we choose India, uh, Egypt? So guys, Egypt is going to provide us. The roadway to the Middle East region and the African region, as far as the trade cargo is concerned, because the route goes from the road. Let me show you the route. So the route, this is Mumbai. Suppose from Mumbai, any uh, cargo is to be given. So Africa, so this is going to go through this medium, and in Middle East also we can go either go through this route or we can go through the. Why do we prefer this route? Because this route is again very much, uh, I would say, uh, very much vulnerable. Although this route and these two routes are very much vulnerable because we know majority of the trade goes through this. Suez Canal only, so piracy happens a lot in this area, in the Gulf of Aden, because here we have the port of Africa. So Somalia, Ethiopia, Djibouti, these are the countries which are there here. So Somalia is the country which is known for the piracy. So these are the two regions which are very much uh, vulnerable. But that is a deviation from the topic. We were discussing why Egypt was chosen. So it said Egypt was chosen first of all. It is provide, going to provide us the Roadway or the gateway to Africa it is also going to provide us the uh, gateway to Europe and the Middle East nation because here we have this is an iPad, so I hope you can clearly see it. So this is an iPad, so now is a part of Egypt, and from here you can clearly enter the Middle East. And you all, I hope, you know this part that. India now shares cordial relations with Israel, with Saudi Arabia, and we have Oman, UAE as well, with which we have improved our relations. Qatar, Bahrain are also some of those. Okay. Now, geographically, let's talk about the importance of Suez Canal. So, 
I have already told you that majority of the trade goes from this route to the Europe and vice versa. We have two important ports. Port Said, which is in the Mediterranean Sea, the port of West Canal, and Port Suez in the Red Sea. Okay. So the recent news is that the Egypt government is planning to give land to the Indian industries in the Suez Canal Special Economic Zone. Now, special economic zones from the name itself are the special zones which are created so that the economy can be uplifted. Okay, so in those specific zones, certain taxes are waived off, certain uh, laws are not applicable. Okay, so laws are amended in order to give the businesses a leeway in these special economic zones. In India, we also have a special economic zone act of 2005, which governs the special economic zones. And it, right now, if the government is planning to revamp that act according to the needs, but that is another matter. But do remember that special economic zone act is there in India specifically, and what we just talked about. Apart from this, there is one more thing, or this is guys rather a vision. India, Middle East, Europe, trade, food, energy, corridor. So, three corridors are being envisioned by India simultaneously, which will go through Egypt only. Okay, so here Egypt is not only going to provide us the food gateway to the Middle East, it is also going to provide us the gateway to Europe. Okay, so that is why India is planning to create the trade, food, energy corridor wherein we can uh, change the exchange of trade, the food products and the energy. Certain so knowledge facts about Egypt. So the capital is Cairo, the currency is pound and Arabic is the official language of this nation. 90% of its uh, population is Islamic. Basically, Muslim in religion and it is advanced continent in country. We have seen tonight the Peninsula Forts in Asia. Okay, and it is divided in Africa and Asia. Uh, here you can see the map of Egypt and the region. Okay, now Republic Day, we know that gallantry awards, the Padma Awards are announced. So this year Padma Awards are announced. 106 people have been given the Padma. Out of these 91 people have received the Padma Shri Award. Let's look at the Padma Vibhushan Award. So, six people have received the Padma Vibhushan Award, and all these six people are important for you to remember. Out of these six people, Balakrishna Doshi has recently passed away in January 2023. Okay, so that makes it all the more important. Now, remember that this year Balakrishna Doshi has been given the Padma Vibhushan. But he is also the recipient of Padma Bhushan and he is also the recipient of Nobel Prize for Architecture, which is, which is called as Pritzker Prize. Okay, so he has also won that prize. So do remember Balakrishnan Doshi specifically. And he was the first Indian to receive the Nobel Prize for Architecture. Okay. And apart from this, Dr. Hussain Aysan Krishna, Dilip Mahalanavis, Srinivasan Vardhan, and Mulayam Singh Yad. All these people are important. Please remember again Padma Bhushan is what is important. Then Padma Bhushan. So here are total nine people are given the Padma Bhushan. These are also important. Okay. Question number 10. Himalayan Cataract Project co-founder Dr. Hindu has won the Alice Award for Service to Humanity, a top civilian award of Mahran. Dr. Sadhu Doit is only God as a God of sight because he saved 120,000 people's eyesight who would have otherwise gone blind in the absence of treatment. He belongs to Nepal, which of the following is the correct terminology for his profession. So here guys, I would say this is a very tricky question. This is a very difficult question. Because you would have never imagined in your wildest dream that the profession of the person of the awardee would be asked. Okay, that is why I always tell you and keep you, provide you the facts related to the news. So these are some of the background facts from where the questions can be framed. So he is an ophthalmologist. Okay? So that much is enough. Apart from this, you have 
read everything about him in the question, just know this that, that he is also the recipient of Padma Shri Award and the National Order of Merit of Bhutan, as well as the Brahman Maxis Award of Philippines. Okay, and the IAC Award for Service of Humanity, the Award of Bahrain. So, this is very important. Hai, remember. The next question is there was a smart city CEO conference conducted by the Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs with so Panaji. Panaji made this was possible. Central government will celebrate the India Energy Day 2023 in February in Bangalore. During the celebration, a methanol blended diesel powered ship named MD 15 will be launched. The methanol for this ship will be obtained from the Mahabahu. Amaputra project. The project is being implemented in Dash. So it is being impl implemented in Assam. So here what has happened? Two news are there. First is that India Energy Week was celebrated, and second is that the methanol blended ship was inaugurated, and for that ship, the methanol was taken from Assam under a specific project. So these are two different news, two different. So let's first focus on the first news. India Energy Week 2023, Bangalore, it will be organized in February. Okay. Now, during the week, the first methanol blended uh, ship will be inaugurated. So, methanol blended diesel powered ship because in this diesel, we have 15% of methanol. Okay. So, the methanol is going to be uh, taken from the Mahabhu Brahmapura. Now, what is this Mahabahu Brahmaputra project? It was launched in 2021 in Assam to produce 100 tons per day of methanol. And right now, Assam is planning to increase this 100, day per, 100 tons per day capacity to 500 tons per day. Uh, and this project is being implemented by the Assam Petrochemicals Limited. The next question is Where has the American India Foundation established India's first STEM Innovation and Learning Center? So Chennai is the right So guys, first STEM innovation and learning center, it is obviously going to encourage the students to take up STEM courses. Okay? So it will be established in Chennai at the under the Vanavil Mandaram Initiative. And this Vanavil Mandaram Initiative was launched by Tamil Nadu so that it can encourage people to take up STEM courses, science, technology, engineering, mathematics courses. Okay. And to instill the scientific rationalism in students and simplify the learning of science and maths. That was the aim of this Sanatil Mandara scheme. Next question Recently, Yungari Fire Station won the Subhash Chandra Bose after the Mandar Puraskar for 2020. Which state does the fire station belong to? So it belongs to Mizoram. Okay, two organizations have won the award this year. First is Odisha State Disaster Management Authority and second is Nuclear Fire Station. These two have won the Subhash Chandra Bose Apta Prabhadra Puraskar 2023. Now, this is an Indian award given for the disaster management. Every individual and organization can be awarded uh, through this award on January 23 by the government of India. And January 23 is the Parakram Divas. We have already uh, there is a three day international Sangam craft being organized. So it is being organized in Chia. But do you know which state is the center of attraction? It is Odisha. Yes, in the Jaipur International Summit on Craft, the Odisha craft will be displayed. Okay, so this is again an example of the unity. Okay, the companionship that India shares. And the states in India share, share with them among them. The next question is by which year does Himachal Pradesh come at to become the first green energy state? So by 2025. Recently, Indian Agriculture and Farmers Health and Ministry approved an Apple cluster and other cluster development program. Where will this cluster be developed? <coughs> So, Union Agriculture and Farmer Welfare Ministry has approved the Apple Cluster. Now, this Apple Cluster has been approved under the Cluster Development Program. Okay? 
This cluster development program was launched by the union government and the basic idea of this cluster development program was to develop certain clusters across the nation and those clusters will be specially known for the specific product. For example, the Shopian district will now be known as the apple cluster. So obviously a brand value has been attached to the apples of this district. So now if we get the apples of the, this district or if, if they go to the market, obviously they will have a heightened market value. So that's the basic idea of this cluster. Not only improving the farmer's income, but also the quality of the product will also be increased through the cluster development program. Now this announcement of making the of making Shopian district an apple cluster was made during the conference which is India Cold Chain Conclave which was organized in New Delhi by the Ministry of Agriculture to be a conjunction with the PhD Chamber of Commerce and Industry. Okay. Now rupees 135 crore approximately will be spent on this apple cluster on training the farmers, on uh, branding their products and taking this, their products to the market. So everything will be developed under this apple cluster project. Okay? And out of this amount, rupees 37.05 crore would be the grant from the union government. Okay? And uh, the fee will be implemented for four years. So I have already told you that the ministry launched the Horticulture cluster development program under which the certain clusters will be developed. So, 53 clusters will be developed under the scheme, and the scheme was launched in 2021. National Horticulture Board is going to implement the scheme. So, 53 clusters will be developed now. Then, the scheme was launched in 2021. 12 clusters were connected. Okay, so in the 12 clusters, in the pilot phase, the scheme will be operated. So among these 12 clusters, the Shopian district was one of those. Okay. So do remember that right now this program in its pilot stage only. Right now the cluster development program has been launched on a pilot basis in Shopian district. Okay. Now we, this is the list of all the 12 districts where the clusters will be developed and these are the pilot districts okay estimated investment so the cdp scheme aims to attract 10000 crore rupee of investment to develop the 53 clusters okay and this will be converged with the agricultural infrastructure fund and the formation and promotion of 10000 mpus okay to obtain synergies obviously when we are going to develop the clusters, we have to develop the infrastructure of the area as well. So, convergence of this fund with the scheme means that the assistance or financial, uh, financial assistance would be provided through this fund as well. Okay, and it will also help in creating the farmer producer organizations in the specific clusters. Okay, so this is how the schemes are converged and synergies are obtained so that we can achieve the integrated goal of doubling the farmer's income and at the same time it's increasing the agricultural exports and Next question is where was the largest biennial price services and previous exercise named MPEX 2023 held? So, Kati Nanda, Port City in Andhra Pradesh, the price. Okay. What is the maximum sum assured in the LIC Jivananda plan? So, 5 lakh rupees is the, is the maximum sum insured and 2 lakh rupees is the minimum sum insured. Okay. So, this is the Jivananda plan, which is a life insurance plan basically. In case of the death, the people, the heirs are given the money. Okay. So that is all. Now minimum and maximum age to enter in this scheme is 15 to 20 years. Entry, uh, sorry, the term, term of this term will be 15 to 20 years and the average age to enter into the scheme is 90 days to 50 years. Okay. The, now also remember that if the claim is above 3 lakhs, then a necessary medical examination would be done. But if the claim is below 3 lakhs, for example, if you have gone for the minimum uh, Come assured, and uh, if the claim that if the final claim is below three lakh, then there will be no medical examination. Okay? So that is all. Apart from this, you won't have to memorize anything else.
the last question of the day is then was the liberalized payment mechanism scheme launched by Apple? Very important question. So it was launched in 2004. So Albi has released the outward payment answer under the liberalized payment answer for resident, resident individuals data for November 2020. How much amount went outside the country? That was the data released by RBI, but that data is not important for us because firstly, that was the monthly data and secondly, the outward remittances uh, amount is not asked in the examination, right? So that is not important. Inwards are asked many a times because World Trade Organization, World Investment Report of UN uh, see that also uh, gives that data and from that report, the question is good. Now coming back to the news, so liberalized the returns scheme was not bad here yeah, so that it can facilitate Indian residents sending out their money to their uh, family members outside. For example, many people from India go out to study. So their parents earn her and deposit the money in their children's bank account in, in the other country. Okay, So that transaction takes place. Under the purview of this liberalized Shemitans scheme. Okay, so that's the basic idea. The IRS allows parents to transfer money to their children studying abroad. Any Indian resident can participate in it and transfer up to $250,000 abroad in a financial year. So there's a limit. And this limit is important. Directly, this can be asked. A question can be made on this. So here guys, the lecture ends. I hope that you have enjoyed the lecture. Although I'm just looking at the time. So yes, I know that the time is beyond 40, 45 minutes. So but we cannot do anything. We had to cover up the entire week's current affairs. So I hope that now you are free and you have learned some things through this video. In case you have any feedback, you can give us on the WhatsApp number. You can also give us in the comment section. Thank you so much guys for watching this video. So let's meet tomorrow. Goodbye.